ho, Tudor minded people. It's Philadelphia Carry for Tudor Time Machine. The word I share with you this week is extempore. My friends, fortune's favour continues mine. How I revel and disport myself each moment I tarry with my own bright, particular star, Richard Burbage. There is but one small rent, one tiny blemish in my unmitigated joy essence to be favoured by such a man, such a great actor. I confess he is apt to speak a mickle too much of himself. It is true that I adore to hear of the antics of the theatre, of the machinery and the scenery and the foibles of this actor or that actor, but I do not delight in indulging all Arby's humours. I dislike to act the doting mother to the wounded child when the applause was less than thunderous, nor do I relish the bellows and stamps about the tiring room as the great man groans over this or that word that was not delivered with the genius he is capable of. I tire of the threats that Arby will never go on the stage again, that he has lost the love of his public, that he will abandon his profession, yea, his life. The gentleman doth protest too much, methinks. Tis only the next moment that I hear one thousand times of the praise and applause rained down upon Arby until I am quite weary of it. I confess that natural is the pride for having played every great part written for our English stage. Proteus, Othello, Romeo, Caesar, Macbeth, Hieronimo, Valpone, Lear, Sejanus, Antony, Subtle. You see, I have his roles by heart, because I have listened to speeches of each and every one of them ad nauseam. I have been made love to by Romeo, flattered by Antony, railed at by Othello, scorned by Lear, teased by Valpone, and lectured by Sejanus. Oh, that my good Arby might sometimes woo me extempore. Extempore. How now, Tudor Files? What think you? If you're new here, I'm Gage. I'm Jessica. And we're here with Philadelphia Carey for Tudor Word of the Week. Don't miss a word and listen to the Tudor Time Machine Story Project. So diverting. And I pray you tell an ingle and ring the little YouTube bell. La, 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 la. Tudor Files. Thank you for listening. Every one of you has the wit of Rosalind and the heart of Cordelia. And don't be shy about writing to Philadelphia on YouTube or suggesting words. We love hearing from our listeners. How do you spell our Tudor Word of the Week, Philadelphia? It is spelled E-X-T-E-M-P-O-R-E. -E, extempore. Well, we still use the word extempore, but it's a very formal word now maybe used in a legal setting or something like that. In the Tudor period, extempore was used to mean to improvise, to do something off the cuff. Yeah, not to have everything planned out. In the 16th century, the word was used a lot in theatrical context. In Midsummer Night's Dream, Snug the Joiner, one of the mechanicals, asks Peter Quince, Have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it me, for I am slow of study. And Peter Quince says, You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. So improvise, says the director. <laughs> Philadelphia, you say Burbage was always playing one of his characters when he's with you? Indeed. It is as if he had no words of his own, but must always be quoting from some speech. And I say this to you, my friends, and I hope he himself shall not hear it. But when he woos me as Romeo, I must stifle a titter. When he first played Romeo, he was twenty years old, and so lithe he could scale a wall to Juliet's balcony. Now, my friends, the man is a good deal older, and of a bulk to bring down a house. <laughs> oh, Philadelphia, that is not nice. That's mean. Well, I guess Shakespeare was pretty mean to his friend, too, because he put a line in Hamlet, which was first performed in about 1600, years after Burbage first played Romeo and was able to scale walls. So Gertrude says about Hamlet, played by Burbage, he's fat and scant of breath. Wow. Well, I guess Burbage... <laughs> not, and that's also not really how we think of Hamlet, is it? No. Fat and scant of breath. I mean, I guess Burbage could take a joke. I think he could. <laughs> because Shakespeare left that line in. I don't know. But as an actor, 
Isn't Burbage used to doing things extempore? Oh, Cage, Cage, do not be foolish. My Arby is no snug the joiner, no Hilding who plays the parts with no words but only roars. Oh, how can you make such silly comparisons? Sorry, I didn't mean it as an insult. I guess then as now, the entertainment business was and still is a hierarchy. There are the principals and the background players. But don't theater historians think some of the most important clowns like Will Kemp and Robert Arman and Richard Tarleton, people who Shakespeare really designed plays around, that they essentially improvise their parts? That's true. Philadelphia, those guys were extremely well-regarded performers. Shakespeare wrote some of his best characters with the clown actors in mind, and they did a lot of their work extempore. Arby is no clown. He is no jester. He plays kings and princes. Oh, how ridiculous you are today, dear Gage. I'm just trying to sympathize with you, Philadelphia. Don't get your curdle in a twist. A quip extempore. Thank you. Shakespeare liked to write his love scenes with wordplay between lovers as if they were improvising with each other. That kind of improvisation demonstrates the intelligence and quickness of the characters. Philadelphia, let's act out a few lines between Petruchio and Kate from Taming of the Shrew. With pleasure. Catherine says to Petruchio, Go, fool, and who thou keepest command? And Petruchio answers, Did ever Diane so become a grove as Kate this chamber with her princely gait? Oh, be thou Diane, and let her be Kate, and then let Kate be chaste, and Diane sportful. Where did you study all this goodly speech? It is extempore from my mother wit. A witty mother, witless else her son. Am I not wise? Yes, keep you warm. Marry, so I mean, sweet Catherine, in thy bed. (laughs) How diverting! If only my Arby and I could spar extempore. (laughs) Well... He is always in different characters when you're with him. Why don't you learn the lines of one of the characters in his favorite play, and then you can act them out together? Oh, my dear Gage, my Arby has been conning roles to his memory for decades. I cannot learn enough to act all those roles with him. No, no, I must beseech him, as Falstaff says to Hal in Henry IV. Shall we have a play extempore? Give heed to defiles. Add some 16th century source to your vocabulary with extempore. Listen in next time. Don't miss a word. Subscribe on YouTube and give me a like. (laughs) 